Hey photographers, Rich Sealing here, and today we're looking at a photo from my friend Dan B, and we're going to look at the processing I did on a wildlife photo. Now, this photo started out as a JPEG. That's what Dan was shooting, so that's what we had to work with, and uh, it looks a little overexposed here. That's one of the things we're going to deal with here, but all the information is in there still to make a good print. So the first change I made was this curves one layer, and you can see what I did is I used a curve to bring down the background density and uh, also added a little bit of contrast through there. You'll notice I masked out the animal and this is a pretty common thing you're going to see on wildlife photographs. The lighting on the animal versus the lighting on the scene can often be very different. So it's pretty common that I use one setting for the background and another setting for the animal itself to bring out the detail I want. And you can see it right up here we'll go to curves three Here's the setting for the animal. And I've brought down the density on this primarily. It adds a little bit of contrast, but it's mainly about bringing that down into the right density from this very bright exposed to the right image that we started with. So those two changes start to bring this into place quite a bit. You know, and these build up in a pretty non-linear fashion, so you're not seeing everything exactly as the step I took at work. We're looking backwards at the final changes that made all this, not how this was built up into it. So the next thing I saw in here, you can see actually curves too, I probably saw this a little earlier, is the shadows down underneath the animal needed a little help. It just looks a little flat there. So I wanted to add a little bit of contrast. And you can see with this curve, I'm actually lightening the three quarter tones and uh, darkening just by a little bit those shadows. You can see small move there, but it looks a lot darker through the process of that. Now the next major thing that brings this into place is this curve seven layer where I'm just bringing down this left hand side of the image and a little bit of the top of the bottom. When I'm processing, one of the things I'm always very conscious of is our eye moves to the brightest part of the photograph. And we can change how the eye moves through the photograph and how long it lingers based on the brightness or the darkness of an area. So by darkening this area, I move the eye into the animal a lot more. And the animal is really the focus of this photograph. Everything else is just the setting that that animal is in. And through the process of this, um, we refined the animal a little bit. On that same line of thought, the back of the grizzly here is the brightest part of our scene, but it just, this isn't where I want your eye to go. I want your eye to be looking more into the face of this animal. So I've masked off the back of the animal and brought that down with a curve. And this is a atypical curve for me, putting this many points on it, but for this circumstance, that was the right curve. So we've brought that down and it stops your eye from going there. The next thing I said, I want to bring the eye into the face of the animal. So I've masked off the face and I've just brightened up his face a little bit. And that just brings you in a little bit more. And then we get into a little bit of fine tuning here on curve five. I'm going to have to show you, look, we're just looking at the eyes here and we're going to zoom in and look at the eyes. The eyes are a really important part of uh, any wildlife photograph. We're drawn to the eyes of any animal or person that we look at. I've added quite a bit of contrast to keep them from being dull and gray and try to bring some life into it. Eyes are something that always gets retouched in portraits because they rarely catch the light great. And you know, it's the same with animals. So we're giving him a little bit of the beauty treatment here so that you can see him, I'm not trying to fake anything, just trying to make it so you can see the, uh, the intensity of this animal. And we've got another little change here, very small area masked off. But uh, as we've, in that previous layer, we also, whenever we add contrast, we increase saturation. So it pumped up that little red eye. You know, this guy was out partying a little bit too much with his friends the other night. So I've sucked the saturation just out of this little corner, just out of this little corner of the eye. Just, uh, this was headed for a 24, 36 inch print again, just makes that eye a little bit more clear, a little bit more believable. So as we built up here, uh, color balance needed a little bit of work here. So we've got an overall color balance that's coming in, and this is just a, a little on the blue side. So we've got a color balance that takes out some of that blue. We're adding yellow, and we take out a little bit of the green too. It just looked a little, little green with where the white balance came out. Color balance is one of those things that 
perfect white balance in camera or raw is not going to get you the right color balance for an image. It's something that there's, there's always tints to the light and whether that be from bad decisions with your white balance in raw or in camera that you're working out that should be worked out there, or it's the scene itself. If you've got a scene where all the lights coming from a blue sky overhead, you're going to have a lot of blue in the photograph or green foliage is a giant green bounce card and going to put a lot of green in there. Or you'll see this at sunrise or sunset where the foreground has reds or yellows or oranges brought in by the light around it. Sometimes we want those tints that are brought in. Sometimes we don't. And here I thought something that was just brought out the color of the animal and the feeling of the greens and the feeling of this dirt by removing some of that blue would enhance that. And as we build up here, we also, you know, I looked at the color balance of the animal. So this color balance layer, instead of the mid-tones where I usually work, I went into the highlights because the highlights just had some tints that I wanted to remove. With this color balance layer, I've just done a little bit of fine tuning to the highlights. And it's something that really we need to see all the changes on this for that to look at. So the next thing I did is I wanted to add a little bit of saturation just to the animal. So we're just adding a little bit plus six. And we've just tried to make that fur a little bit more believable. Again, there's just things that we don't get the sense of in a photograph that we do in real life. And this fur just kind of looks dead and flat there. And I want to bring that color that's in these grizzly bears out in a realistic feeling way so that you can experience that in the photograph. And last little tweak here I'm going to show you. I've done a color range mask on these bright highlights on the fur. And what we've done here, we'll go into highlights. We've just added a little bit of red to this. And as I turn this on or off, you look here, this is subtle. I just wanted the color to shift this more of the reddish brown color of the rest of his fur instead of a little bit of the uh, cyan cast that we have in that. And that's a, you know, a pretty common thing to see in highlights that we start to see a little bit of color cast. And then it's just the last step was adding a little bit of more hue saturation to this photograph just to bring out the color. And you can see, look at these greens in particular. That's a key color for me when I'm adding saturation. I don't want them to go fluorescent or uh, nuclear. I don't want to look like a 60s acid trip. I want real feeling of green out of that. So if I turn those on and off, you can see that difference. We bring out a little bit more life in the soil. And just in this fur, we bring out a little bit more saturation. We did that saturation here for just the animal, but we also needed a little bit of saturation brought out overall. And we're always looking for that Goldilocks zone. Not too much, not too little, just right. Where that just right is, is a, is a fine line that we're always searching for. So let's go back and look at where we started and where we wound up. So that's the processing I did for this. I know Dan was very happy with the print and it's uh, gracing his walls and he can show people this memory from a fantastic trip. And that's an example of my processing with wildlife. If you want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button. Give me a couple likes because that helps. Check out my blog at craftingphotographs.com for more helpful photography tips. Thanks for watching.